And if you scroll down in here, it gives you the ability to take a look at it earlier on, but I like to look at it after I've already added the scenario. I'm going to click on preview and it's going to show you what this email looks like. Here we go. So it automatically pulled out his first name, typed in that little paragraph we put in. It put in the automatic pricing that's coming up. This is best pricing right now at the time the email gets sent. It automatically put his scenario information and then I put my little sign off and I put my um, my logo and my, my um, signature down at the bottom. This is how this thing's gonna look. Now we added a new feature in here, send test email. This sends to you, not to your borrower. If you ever wanna see, I know a lot of you say you like the preview, but you wanna know what it looks like when it comes through in an email. So if you click on this button, it will automatically shoot a test email to your email, which means the email address you have on file with Loan Sifter. And it, it sends pretty quickly, you'll get it within a couple of minutes. So you can take a look and see and make any amendments you want. So again, once you use these templates, it's really easy. Set up one, that's why I called it borrower specific. Then as I talk to each borrower, all you really have to do is go in the recipient, choose the borrower, and go in the search and select their search. It's very fast. Within two minutes, you can have an email campaign set up for a borrower you just hung up the phone with. And again, remember this thing is automatically going to send out when you told it to automatically. So there's a couple other things in here. Um, let's see. First of all, you'll notice under Manage, you can see all of your campaigns in here. You can manage your campaigns, your templates, and your searches. If you ever want to see how many searches do I have in here, um, these are all the ones that you moved into your general repository. It'll show you a whole list of them. It'll also show you a list of the templates and the campaign. So it's real easy for you to look through all those. Um, reports. This is really interesting. There's two things that can happen. Um, you can either have the ability to send it out through our email campaign system. I mean, sorry, our email system or your own. Let me show you in the personal settings. Up in here, it was in our old version as well. The way this works is if you select this, your email system will be the one sending it out. If you select this, we'll do it for you. Now, you can choose either one you want. If you use ours, we create an email for you. And I know this is confusing. This is my actual real email. This is what the system created for me. So it will take your name at loansifter.com. Now I know that's confusing. You can go ahead and select how you'd like it to look when it goes through to the borrower. And if they reply to you, it will be forwarded to your actual email. The reason you use this is because we get a slightly better deliverability rate. If you're sending these out to a lot of people, you know sometimes they can be spammed out. When we use our system, they aren't spammed as much. So it's up to you which one you wanna use. But if you do use our system, there's a couple things you can use. The delivery port will actually show you if any of the emails you sent didn't get to whoever you meant it to go to. So that's a nice plus. Obviously, if you're using your email, your own email system, we can't track that. Um, the other thing we do is the unsubscribe contacts. Now, spam law requires that we put the little link at the bottom of the email that says, you know, click here if you'd like to unsubscribe from this email. We have to put it in there. Um, however, if you're using our email address, we will keep track of it here. If you're using yours, I believe you you receive the email directly in your email and then you have to go take them off or handle them however you'd like. But those are two features that are in there if you'd like to use it. So I do want to point that out. Also in here in your personal settings, you can set up your default signature. So I went ahead and I put in some of my basic info, but I also wanted to add a logo. So I went ahead and I happened to add it to the bottom of my image. So it'll show the name and then my logo. You can also put the logo above your name or you can do one of each if you wanna put your name, or I'm sorry, a picture of you and then your name and then maybe your logo, you can do all of that. So we've given you that ability now. Um, and you also have the ability to put in any kind of disclaimer you might want at the bottom of every single email that you don't wanna to have to retype every time. And you can also include the show how the equal housing image if you want to show that as well. So lots of pieces that you can customize in here. Okay, I'm going to move on to the one last piece, which is the fee template, because the fee template now plays into this. Any of you that have been doing Zillow quoting, you probably have seen these fee templates before. If you haven't, you've probably never seen it. So under marketing, it's under fee templates. I suggest every single one of you go do this. You can create as many fee templates as you want, but I'll show you, you really only need one. So typically you'll click new fee template. I'm going to open up one that I already have saved. Um, there's a couple different pages in here you're going to run through. You're going to name your scenario. Now I just named it a general one. This basically has to do with all the fees behind the scenes that come into play when calculating an APR. 
We're very detailed now. You're going to set up every bit of fee. So actually the really important one in here is your, sorry, the fees page where you can set up, yeah, the YSP doesn't really matter. This is really more for when you're using um, Zillow quoting or something, because if when you have a YSP run on your search, it's going to go above and beyond this. But all of these matter, your origination fee, your broker fee, your application fee, all of these fees can be entered in here. They can even be lender specific. So you'll notice in here that you've got default lender fees, but maybe you know that Countrywide, for example, charges, I'm making this up, 425 for their underwriting fees, and you want to be overly accurate. You can actually go in and I'll show you where you do that for each lender. This is just generic for each of your lenders. So fill out all of your fees. On the front page, the front one is your settings. Like I said, you're going to name it. You can, if you work at a, a branch or a company where you want to share this fee with other people, you can. Otherwise, you can just keep it to yourself. Um, apply overage. This has to do with, let's say you're tracking a deal and you're looking for one point YSP. Well, what happens if the best pricing that comes back is, is 1.02? What do we do with 0.02? It might not be a lot of money, but we want you to tell us, do we want to apply it to your commission, to the origination fees, etc.? So it gets real specific. Um, these other things are pretty self-explanatory. You can walk through them. You're going to go in, um, for the email campaigns, it really doesn't matter if you select all your programs. However, for example, maybe you have different fees that you want to charge on an FHA deal versus a conventional deal. So you can set up two separate templates and obviously don't select the FHA on your conventional one. Um, you can also set up states. Let's say you have different fees for different states. I'm just selecting all because I'm only keeping one set of them. Terms as well. Maybe you want to charge different fees for different products. Um, the, these are additional ways that you can use the general fees. So as far as the email campaign, this doesn't really apply. But any of you that are using Zillow or LendingTree or our consuming portal, these all work through here as well. Um, and then your lenders. Um, if you ever want to limit any lenders that are priced in your deal, you can do that. So maybe you like certain lenders to show up in your searches, but you don't want that lender to show up um, in an email campaign that's automatically sent to your borrower. It happens. So if that's the case, let's say, for example, we want to avoid SunWest. I'm going to go through and I'm going to select all of my lenders except for SunWest. Sorry, except for I am selecting SunWest. So you'd go through and you'd select all of them except for that one. Um, and you could save that as, a, as how you'd like to price each one of your deals. And then you've got your filters. So this may be the only piece that you want multiples for. Maybe you want different fees on a purchase than you do on a rate and term. So you may want to create multiple templates and one template will say fees for a refi and one will say fees for a purchase. Again, the only reason you need more than one template is if different fees apply to different types of deals. Once you set these up, the system will now calculate everything else for you. So I did tell you I would show you where you can set up uh, specific lender fees under account under manage lenders. If you've ever been in here before, we've updated this page too. Here's a list of all the lenders that are live in your account. If you select a lender, it's going to open up a little bit more information in here. This is also where you guys can put in your account executive's name and email and phone number and all that. But if you look over here to the right, you can edit lender fees. So maybe you have specific fees per, for this particular lender. And if you click, you know, if you set this up, it will override the fees that you have in the general template. Gets a little confusing, but I swear it makes sense once you play with it.